Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged Plus. I'm joined today by Mark Schaffer from PET Personal Electric Transport and he's brought along this incredible array of amazing bikes and scooters and I'm not absolutely sure what some of these are. So <laughs> Mark, welcome. Thank you so much for coming along. This is really exciting. But before we get into detail about these, can you explain to me, you know, why personal mobility and local mobility is so important and, and, and what the future is in that? Um, we call it micromobility, which is a bit of a buzzword. And the common denominator is everything is lightweight, doesn't pollute, it's sustainable, and it's engineered for the sort of speeds that you use in, in cities and towns rather than 200 miles an hour down the autobahn. Right. <clears throat> so they're not, I mean, none of them are designed to do 60 miles an hour or something like that. They are basically, because uh, there's, there's a lot of regulation around them that keeps changing and is still developing. I mean, some things it's actually illegal to use on the road, except I know people who use them every day. So what is the situation with that? Um, well, there is no regulation. Right. That's apart from stuff like this, e-bikes, you're allowed to ride um, off this, can't have a throttle, 250 watt maximum on the motor. So not great if you're a bigger guy. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm a short ass, so I'm okay. Yeah. Um, and limited at 15 miles an hour for assistance. And you can kind of pedal faster than that. Right. But with a big heavy e-bike like this, once you get above 15 miles an hour, it's like pedaling through syrup. Yeah. So, and that's, that's it. So scooters at the moment, there's no regulation. Anything else such as cargo bikes, electric wheels, skateboards, nothing else is legal at the moment. So, it's not, so there isn't, I mean, is that, there isn't an actual law that says you cannot use this, but there's also not a law that regulates that you can, or are you really dissuaded from using these? There's, there's no, uh, so, okay, so there's no specific law. I mean, we're talking about legislation that got, dates back to 1835. Right. <clears throat> and technology just hadn't advanced that fast back then. So yeah. you didn't have electric scooters in 1835. There's also the Road Traffic Act in 1988 that says that you need insurance and the vehicles are supposed to be type approved so right. you know they're, they're fudging the, the existing legislation yeah. to dissuade people from using them because at the moment then you can use a scooter that's a rented one that you rent by the hour or whatever that's you can use those legally in the uk in certain cities yeah so look i mean the government are very aware that if we're going to hit our targets in 2035 and 2050 for being carbon neutral yeah. we need to strip the weight out of transport and rely on lighter, more efficient vehicles such as these. So they've created a loophole and a regime where they can test the technology, which is why you see scooter trials right. around Britain, which are ring fenced. You have to have a driving license sign on to the app. So they're creating a meaningful data set. So in a year's time, perhaps the DFT can go, look, guys, this is pretty much the same as bicycles. Let's legislate for them. Yeah. Because I mean, these ones, I just want to talk about the, because that, I've never seen one that's as big as that. That, that really appeals to me, because I, I didn't grow up with skateboards, so I'm not right. used to having both feet like that and me going, going that way. That, I can have my feet going that way. Okay, so you like, you like the size of the deck, not the fact that it goes like a bat out of hell. Oh, does it? So this is yeah. fast. So well, look, like, like any, anything, like any transport, there's a sport element. So there's very practical stuff, like yeah. that E2, electric scooter there, which is great for cities and taking it on trains and stuff like that. And that folds up quite easily, it's quite yeah, light. Yeah, two seconds flat, yeah. it weighs 10 kg, right. it will cruise along at 15 and a half miles an hour, all good. However, once you get into it, some people like the more powerful stuff, like that V-set and that NAMI, which is the state of the art and right. goes like stink, or even stuff like this, or, 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 the, or the one wheel there. So the EUCs there, the electric unicycles and the one wheel is very much about off-road right. kind of like you know trailing so mark tell me about the the, the, the pink bike it's great. The pink, the pink, I've, I've seen all the others the around pink bike. i've never seen something i've never seen that particular model you've you never seen one? a bicycle this pink yeah. think <laughs> <laughs> well it was you know the, the color was kind of an error our, our vlad kind of was, was was looking at some photos and thought it was a slightly different color but actually we, we've grown to like it yeah i think it's great the bike itself um it's available in, this is off-road spec, which right. means it's got a slightly more powerful motor and a throttle, but you can, you can buy it in on-road spec, so right. the motor goes down to 250 watts assistance only. Uh, personally, I prefer the off-road spec, and I know yeah. pretty much 99% of, of, of buyers of e-bikes do too. Right. Um, 
but yeah, it's great. You know, it, it will tra you know, tramp along at 20 odd miles an hour and um, you'll, you know, you'll get a fair whack of But what's great about it. it is that, you know, if you had just a pedal bike, yeah. with that much suspension and tires, it would be a real hefty thing. Exactly. To, uh, but, but I mean, the fact is, if you're going along your average city street, particularly if you're having to stay on the side of the road, we know what the state of the roads are. There's a lot of lumps and bumps. You know, that's the thing I'm really aware of riding a regular road bike now is, <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. you're hitting potholes. That thing just must float over that. I mean, it's got well, no sure. Bike. I mean, there's a safety aspect to it, too. I mean, obviously, if you've got a bit of electrical assistance, then you can take a little bit more, you know, more liberties with the weight and you can yeah. add bigger tires. You can add hydraulic brakes and shocks. And, and so, yeah, I mean, for, for, for horrible old city streets, it's, it's probably safer than a road bike. Yeah. And because I've got no idea what those would cost. I mean, they're presumably that's quite an expensive bike if it's an off-road one. Well, I mean, you know, you can get it these days. You can get a decent e-bike for a grand. I mean, this is a bit more high specs. So this right. is a couple of grand. Right. But it's not, you know, if you spread it over well, three years and consider how cheap it is to run. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, if you, and if you compare it, well, you can't compare it with a car. because It's so much. No. It's basically, yeah. But apart from it does get you from A to B, yeah. which probably does it a, a bit quicker than a car. So well, in the city, in definitely. Yeah. Without any question. So the next one, I've seen these around. So these have been around a bit longer, haven't they? Because I definitely recognise that one. So, you know, there, there's been a trend towards um, kind of 70s, uh, a 70s kind of pastiche motorbike, but electrified. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is, uh, this, we call this a little buddy. And it's it's one of many, and it's you know probably one of the best ones. It's got like a mid-drive unit, which is which is interesting. So it's just a little bit more efficient. Uh, it rides great. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. No, that looks great, really good. And then these three here, I kind of know what the, the you know, and I would call, that's unicycles, aren't they? I sort of think of them as monowheels, but unicycle. Electric there, there's all the, sorts of words for them. I mean, that? right. <laughs> the common denominator of those three is that they all use um, the sort of gyroscope technology that you have in your phone. Right. So the, the, the control board knows where the pedals are effectively right. and keeps you level. So once you turn it on, it stabilizes like an old Segway. Right. Um, oh. And yeah, you've got different configurations. So you've got the one wheel here, which is more like a sort of a snowboarding experience. Yeah. Whereas the EUCs, if arguably, it's your, your legs are parallel like a downhill skier. Um, personally, I prefer EUCs. Lots of people prefer one wheels. Right. Um, but, all, but this is all about sport. It's all about fun. Right. You know, it's all about challenging yourself and balance. And it's pretty much like skiing down a mountain that goes on forever. Right. <laughs> and, and probably the closest that any of us are going to get to be superheroes. It's, right. it's that yes. much fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they do look, when people ride on them, they, you just look cool when you're on it because you're not doing you because I mean, you know, I, I need this. I need <laughs> bus. But if you're just doing that and just sort of, you're just zooming along and that and the way I've seen people use them is extraordinary I mean they're kind of very relaxed they seem very relaxed once they've got used to it I mean oh, it's, yeah, it's it all in the time, knees isn't it there's a learning curve but once yeah. you get good it, 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 it's it's great I mean our, our Roberto over there has been riding for years and years and you know yeah he's completely fluid and it's almost like an extension of himself yeah, yeah. almost like he becomes bionic you know yes yeah. it's, it's a it's a wonderful thing yeah so Mark in terms of legislation what would you like to see changed well, we need to, as far as possible, accelerate regu regulating for this, for this technology. And what we'd like to see is a two-tier approach, where on the first tier, you allow people to ride the lower powered machines up to the speed limit of say, we, we advocate 20 miles an hour, which is the speed limit of minor roads and cycleways anyway, um, and have an equivalency with bicycles. So I don't think you really need to start taxing it or insuring. I mean, if people are going under 20 miles an hour, it's not really a big deal. Cyclists do that every day, and it can only be a good thing. But what we'd really like to see is, is a regulatory framework which allows people who, who, who want to go above that speed or carry cargo, carry passengers, right. to allow them to do so. And so some kind of framework where they're able to register equipment, get third-party liability insurance. I don't think road tax is necessary. Um, but yeah, to, to, you know, to allow this technology to, to breathe and to allow us all to get the benefit from it. Yeah, because I mean, that's certainly, um, cargo bikes is clearly such a huge, potentially huge area. It's huge, Yeah. so yeah. important. And obviously shackling cargo bikes with a 250 watt motor is not reality. Yeah. You know, th this equipment should be capable of carrying kind of like, you know, 
maybe up to half a ton yeah. through the city really efficiently. Yeah. Yeah, and cleanly and quietly. Well, which is kind of yeah, I mean, if, I mean, from, again, I mean, for me, it just seems such an obvious solution, yeah. and could revolutionise our cities. Yeah. Um, so, I, I also, I would suggest that in the meantime, I mean, no one wants to rush regulation, but in the meantime, let's have an amnesty. Let's yeah. say, look, if you're riding on cycle infrastructure and you're riding on minor roads, fine, be yeah. safe, follow the highway code, stop at traffic lights, give pedestrians the right of way. If you ride on the pavement, prepare to have your equipment confiscated and prepare for an on-the-spot fine. Right. If they did that overnight, it would solve the antisocial behaviour problem yeah. and it would give police an obvious target. Yeah. Yeah. No, understood <laughs> very clearly. But so what do you see then? What, what do you see as the, the future of PET? Where, where do you go next? Well, I mean, PET's a bit different. I mean, we're, we're a bunch of enthusiasts that, that loved this stuff before we kind of started trying to make a living out of it. So we've always had this mantra that we're trying to move the technology on. So we're very into product development, introducing new products, getting involved in the design and production of new products. Um, and we also want to see PET roll out in other cities. I mean, PET's got a real commitment to supporting this, this technology. So we, we employ mechanics, we've got a, a, you know, a really good workshop, we're known for that. And we want that kind of customer care to be across the whole country. So expect to see PET in major cities soon. I should call it PET, not PET. <laughs> well, PET, PET, <laughs> call us what you like. I mean, hey, there's a new logo. It's, it's, it's all great. Good. No, I love it. Great. So thank you so much, Mike. It's been it's really, okay. really interesting to find out about that and to see these amazing machines. They are, they are the future. And I mean, just here's an idea. You have a Ford F-150 electric pickup truck which has a massive battery in, or you could use all those batteries to make probably a thousand scooters like that. You know, that's a clue. Pretty much, yeah. In the scale of things. But anyway, that's <laughs> for another day. It is for another day. <laughs> anyway, that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much to, to Mark and to PET. <coughs> and we'll see you all again soon. <laughs>